You've made it really clear. There's about 30% of the country that's all in on everything to do with climate change, right? Good luck. We already know which way they're going to vote. Uh, Glasgow now has created a problem for Albanese, which is you've got to come up with something for 2030. Now, would that be legislated? And if he's a smart man, he matches the government, this thing goes away, just as net zero was about matching the opposition and the issue goes away. Where do you think he'll actually land, though? Look, there's a, a very lively discussion inside the Labor Party. Went to the last <laughs> I'm fluent in your language. I love a lively discussion. <laughs> there's a, they went with 45% last time. Uh, so what would, what would I do if I was calling the shots? I'd be aiming to try and be around 40. Uh, that shows a genuine commitment. That shows that they're prepared to do more than the government, which is absolutely the case. Uh, and it won't allow a government to run a, a scare campaign. It's very hard to say. Now, 35, 36, which we're going to achieve, yeah. is OK. But 40 is evil and will destroy the world. <laughs> they move to a 45, they'll be in a position where they can at least try and mount the scare campaign. But I don't think it's going to resonate as well when they've got their you know, members of their own team, Matt Canavan, Nationals, some Liberals, who are saying... Well, we don't support any of this, mm. and the government's going to cause as much mayhem for the economy as the opposition, and there's not any real difference between them. So I think the the Labor Party need to remember they've got a win seat in Queensland and Western Australia and hold seats in important regional areas of New South Wales, and that that means that they cannot go with the same policies in this particular debate that they've had for 2010, 2013, 2016 and 2019. They need to remember they've got to win votes in WA and particularly in Queensland. Mm. Don't worry, I think the uh, WA government trying to pretend that it's the only part of Australia um, until uh, the election, they're trying to do their bit for you. But Matt Canavan, aforementioned senator here. Now, of course, there is a spectacular difference between 40% and the actual stated targets of 28%. Now, the Prime Minister, I think, made a strategic error by saying, look, I think we can get to 35 which opens up the argument that Stephen has just had, but it's all about um, who can prosecute the argument. If Labor come back, came back at 40%, 2030 promise to legislate, do you start licking your lips that this is 2019 again, or are you where you were a couple of weeks ago that you've given away an advantage? Well, look, I think um, there's some merit in what Stephen said, Paul, that uh, uh, when we, if, we, if our argument is that 28 is better than 40, that's a level of detail that just washes over most people. I mean, they, they don't understand this. I mean, you talk to the man in the street, Paul, they have no idea what the Glasgow conference is, and they don't care. And, Good luck to him. I mean, I, I didn't even realise that yesterday was apparently the... And I'm following it, but I did I missed that yesterday was the Gender, Science and Innovation Day at the Glasgow <laughs> Climate Conference, apparently. Um, um, if I'd known that beforehand, I, I perhaps would have reconsidered my view on, on this whole conference because obviously they would have had a big impact yesterday on those topics. So, I mean, the whole thing's a joke and a farce and, unfortunately, we've signed up to it. So we've, we've got to live with it. We've got to lie in that bed. Uh, so try to run a scare campaign after you've just aligned yourself with a bunch of vegans uh, and anti-car types over in Glasgow isn't going to really fly. But uh, Paul, with Paul, can so I just say something? Look elsewhere to to yeah. Can I say something to you, Matt, and to you especially, Stephen Conroy? The idea that we would select 35, 40, 42, 39 is like a game of pin the tail on the donkey. Correct. Where's the science or where's the Productivity Commission saying you can keep the lights on at 37 but not at 37 and a half? Correct. So have you done your homework about where your baseload power is coming from? What about some well, sort of... Where's the modelling? Where's, where's the, the modelling? modelling? We haven't seen I'm the modelling. We don't know. Matt. You need to check it with Matt. Where's the government's modelling? Well, where's I mean, the opposition's seriously? on 40%? Uh, we, we will produce a policy over the next month or two. I, I'm very relaxed about that. But the government have announced the policy and have announced it before they've even finished doing the modelling. So you can see the poor uh, economist sitting there uh, that's going, oh, my God, now I wrote a report last time that said that... You know, 45 was evil. Oh. And the government have announced it's 28, but really 35. And I've got to now retrofit no, you, you, my modelling. 
<laughs> Stephen, are you suggesting they're going to do the modelling first the and then come economist. up with the number? <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I, well, think mate, they, I think they're already yourself, doing that. Stephen. <laughs> All right. If you, if you, oh. You're not an economist worth your salt if you can't do that, Stephen. That's your job. <laughs> yeah, correct. That's, All right. that's Gleason, what you get paid to do. Gleason, uh, have a crack. The results that your client wants. Paul, have a crack, Paul, Gleason. I, I want to ask Matt a question. Matt, Matt, you just mentioned that, you know, it was a farce and whatever, but you're part of a coalition that agreed to it. How are you going to explain all those problems that exist out in the bush for the farmers and the, and the miners? How are you going to explain that policy to them and give them a guarantee that they're going to have jobs after the next election? Well, Peter, I'm not trying to explain it. I've been uh, up front the whole time that I think it's it's rubbish and I'm going to continue to vote that way in the parliament and so that's why they should elect me and elect other members of LNP that share this view uh, because that's the only way to stop this. I mean, a vote for One Nation or, or Paul or, or Palmer is not going to do that because these policies are decided in government and those parties won't be in government. So that's, that's, that's what I'll be doing, uh, Peter. I, I do not support this and I'll be voting against every element, every aspect of net zero legislation because the no, bad deal for Australia you, well, and I'm sticking Matt, up for our country. You're going on the yeah, well, welcome welcome Matt, back to uh, Matt campaign, Canavan right? Live where we've got all where we've got Matt here and he's here yeah, to answer your oh, questions oh, ladies oh, and oh, gentlemen. Oh, we've got a viewer <laughs> in Melbourne, uh, Stephen in Melbourne. Do you, do you want to say something to, to Matt? <laughs> no, Matt? I would I'd love to know Matt. Excellent. Can you give me first time call? Is he long time listener first time call? He is he is all right g'day Steve how are you mate? Tell us about your tap with you. Good hi Give me your campaign dates with Barnaby. I want to see you on the campaign trail with Barnaby. This is the two of you sitting next to each other when you're asked to, to say you're both on the same page on climate change. I just want to be there for that day. Can you, yeah, I've got, can I you got make no problem sure... with i got no... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've got no problem with that, Stephen, because guess what? Sometimes people disagree, you know, and... and Uh, uh, I, I do have a different perspective on this than some of my colegues. Um, uh, and, and, and he's the Deputy I Prime Minister. the Australian yeah. public are mature yeah. A bit enough. like when Penny Wong had to stand next to Julia think... Gillard and say, as a gay woman, I'm not for gay marriage, you know, like that. Yeah, well, that's a farce, and I think people don't like that. And, 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 and it's much better if we had a political system which, which allows people uh, to express different opinions, even when they're in the same party. I mean, compared to, say, the US, it's quite unusual what we do here. It's quite often and, and regular where people within the Republican Party, within the Democratic Party, take different positions as legislators and argue for them differently. Um, in a country of 25 million people, uh, with 226 parliamentarians in Canberra, guess what? There's, a, there's sometimes a diversity of opinion. Now, that is not welcomed in Canberra. One thing I've discovered in the past month is that the most dangerous thing uh, in Canberra is a debate. They hate yeah, it. Yeah. They just can't stand it. They can't, their heads can't <laughs> compute. But guess what? Sometimes people have different perspectives, and uh, we should, in a vibrant democracy, give voice to those.